good morning to everybody after such an intensive session i will try to make my presentation in a very light way uh, this is going to be the first spotter i'll start with two spotters this is spotter number 1 and this is spotter number 2 so is this csr or cme well when i got this presentation topic i didn't know how to do this presentation because both of them are diagonally opposite topics and that too we have so little time so i'll not stuff you with theory i'll just give you some practical tips and clear some myths <coughs> for that i'll take you on a flashback to the year 2003 for a grand rounds with the retina unit 1 with a very distinguished faculty and it was dr professor gurg's round day usually he used to grill the jr on the first bed that day he decided to grill the jr on the 10th bed and that jr was taken unawares <coughs> the visibly shaken jr presented the case something like this a 45 year old male patient with decrease in vision since 3 months was seen by another unit was diagnosed as csr bar cme and referred to the medical retina clinic and sir you had seen the case and admitted the case professor garg asked him have you worked up the case so what's your diagnosis he said sir it could be cme or csr then professor garg got angry he said this is called dustbin diagnosis it cannot be both so commit to one diagnosis the jr said sister had macular edema sir then he asked another resident to see he said sir it looks like a csr to me then dr garg said okay good there is confusion so how to clear this confusion well if you go by the history we can see that both of them have different presentations i'll not go into the details of how to uh, what are the presenting histories of csr and cme we are all very much aware of that but what is important is the way we elicit history in a patient suspected of csr if you ask this patient have you used any steroids many a times patients may come up with this answer but if you have asked them a very pointed question do you use any skin ointments do you use any inhalers sometimes they may give you the correct answer then it's also important that we assess the patient's personality and rule out a pregnancy in a female patient these were dr gurg's typical questions csr usually causes a micropsia a positive scotoma and these patients have a small hyperopic refractive error as far as the clinical findings are concerned we are all aware that it's a neurosensory detachment you can have peds and rarely subretinal fibrin cme the diagnosis is very straightforward you have a blunted fr and you have a uh, intraretinal cyst in the foveal region so let's come to the spotter number 1 is this csr or cme well let's see how many of us got it right when we did the indirect actually this patient had a shallow detachment in the superior quadrant you can see the difference between the attachment and the detachment now it was more obvious inferiorly with a break at 6 o'clock so the corrugated appearance is a clue in these patients so what is more important before you order an oct is to do a good indirect ophthalmoscopy because if you miss a patient of rd you are doing harm to the patient then coming back to the round so professor gag always used to say do not make a diagnosis of csr without being sure of its extent then you heard a soft voice from behind it was dr pradeep pentesh he said sir although it is important to rule out rd in patients with csr it is equally important that the residents don't go with the impression that csr does not extend to the periphery because in atypical csr it can extend to the periphery then professor gag said ठीक है वो तो रेयर है इनको तो बेसिक्स ही नहीं आता है ए टिपिकल सी आर तो दूर की बात है फोर इयर्स लेटर एज अ कंसल्टेंट आई हैड टू फेस दिस केस दिस पेशेंट वाज ट्रीटेड विद एन पल्स स्टीरॉइड फॉर एग्जीक्यूटिव आरडी एंड रेफर टू अस फॉर नॉन इंप्रूवमेंट व्हेन वी डिड दी ओ एंड द एन इट टर्न आउट टू बी ए केस ऑफ मल्टीफोकल सी ऑल वी हैड टू डू वॉज टू स्टॉप स्टीरॉयड इन दिस पेशेंट this another patient referred to us as chronic csr with subretinal exudate and this patient actually turned out to be a case of cystic sarcosis so this another patient suspected for csr 
what is the next thing to do? Should you do a OCT? Should you do a FFA? Or should you do both of them? Well, we got a OCT. So it shows a serious detachment. So what next? Do you observe this patient as a CSR? Or do you go ahead and do an angiogram? This is another patient with a similar picture. Well, the most important thing to do now is actually do a good slit lamp examination. Because if you find inflammatory cells in these patients who are suspected to be of CSR, then it's not necessarily that you're looking at a CSR, you're looking at a different pathology altogether. So the OCT is not the next investigation of choice. In both these patients, it showed AC cells and retro in the AC and retrodental area. And we had to do a FFA and B scan, which showed these cases with posterior scleritis. And both of these cases did well with steroid treatment. This is another patient suspected for CSR by CME and the angiogram clinch the diagnosis of idiopathic CNVM. So the FFA again scored over the OCT in this patient. However, FFA, OCT is a valuable tool in not only monitoring the vertical height of the SRF, but also one can see the reduction in the area of CSR on in-phase OCT images. So how to treat a CSR? We are all very much aware. We wait for three months and do a FFA guided focal laser and most of these patients do well. However, there are some difficult situations in the management of CSR, like answering this question. Should I continue the drops and capsules which my doctor has written? Well, most of these patients are on some of these drops when they are referred to us. Uh, Napafenac, Bromfenac, Dosrox, and antioxidant ca capsules. Let's see what the evidence tells us. As far as astrozolomide is concerned, except for these two papers that are published, there is no data to support it, and for the other two, there is no published data at all. As far as antioxidant is concerned, there is no benefit as far as the vision and macular thickness is concerned, although it may reduce the amount of fluorescent leakage. And our favorite drug, Napafenac, Except for this case series, there is no data to support its use. And Ketrolac and Bromfenac have no published data till date. <coughs> I follow my teacher. I don't use any NSAIDs in patients with CSR. If you thought answering those questions were difficult, I'll tell you managing pseudophagic patients, CME patients are much more difficult. This 70-year-old patient was referred after a cataract surgery. He was informed three things. Your cataract surgery and IOL is okay, some retinal problem exists, and our specialist will see you. And this patient kept telling me this, sir, I was seeing better before surgery. After surgery, my vision is reduced. So he'll ask you very difficult questions. Sir, is there anything wrong with the surgery? Will I recover vision? And how long will it take to recover the vision? And you'll keep repeating this question, anything wrong with the surgery. You not only have to cool his tempers, but I have to manage this patient. You have to answer this question, why this patient has a CME? So we have to look for operation-related causes, look for any complications, and look for compliance and comorbid conditions. As far as managing CSR, CME patients are concerned, there is no standardized treatment. Most of us follow this step ladder pattern, start with tropical drops, which is usually a combination, then try a subtenance. One can also try oral steroids, Finally, intravitreal injections and surgery as a last resort. Which of these three is better? As far as treatment is concerned, using a combination is better than any using any of these two things alone. As far as prevention is concerned, it's an important take-home message. It is said that NACD alone is better than any of these steroids. Now, coming to the contentious issue, which of this drug is the best drug? Well, if you go by the published data, the Kitralac is the best drug because it's got better penetration into the anterior chamber and vitreous. However, both these drugs are very popular because of better market penetration. As far as anti-VHF is concerned, there is no robust data to support its use. It should be reserved only for in those size which are unresponsive to conventional treatment. <coughs> Let me again go back to the start. This is spotter number two. Sir asked another GI to see. He saw it and he said, 
Sir, surely it is not RD. It looks like a chronic CSR with cystoid changes. But I could not understand why you admitted this case. Just then our savior entered. It was Professor Tiwari. He asked, yes sir, what are you teaching these guys? He said, CSR. And next thing that Professor Tiwari asked was, yes boss, have you examined the disc? That lies the secret of unraveling the mystery of this case. This case actually turned out to be a case of optic disc pit. And as soon as you diagnose a CSR, make sure you are looked at the disc and ruled out the optic disc pit. That's what I was taught. And on a lighter note, some of you must be wondering why Dr. Lalit is missing in the rounds. He was busy organizing the last AOS. And I would like to thank and dedicate this presentation to all my teachers. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kind work. Thank you, Raju, for this unconventional way of uh, presenting.